it gets buggable and in the spot. So, so there we are. And we shall we shall begin with cheers. Good cheers. Cheers, Mark. Nice to have you back. Nice Mark. to be back. Now mm. tell me, Mark, as, as our question we always start with this. Yes. Why do you ride a bike? I ride a bike because from the day I could ride a bike when I was about three and smashed into next door next door's garage door, I went, this is ace. <laughs> This is Ace, and growing up in a little town in the middle of like nowhere, it was always freedom, and it's always been freedom. It's always been that just you on a bike going somewhere. It's just to go somewhere. It's, it's, about, it's not about the destination, it's all the journey, it's all that stereotype stuff. It's all about the journey of just being with your friends, being by yourself, you know, and just having just you and the bike. We saw you the other day uh, up at Cadenia yeah. uh, Dam. Looked like you were having fun up there. Yeah, it was, uh, I was surprised. I, uh, I thought oh, I was going to be freezing, so we, you know, we rugged up a little bit. Still had the pins out, so it wasn't that cold, but it was great. I mean, it, was just, it was nice to be back on sort of home soil and riding the roads. Like, you know, you've been riding for 20 odd years, and it's like, oh yeah, back home kind of thing. So, you did mention though that you've, you've been overseas now for... Nearly 18 months. Nearly 18 months. Yeah. Where, where, where have you been hiding yourself? I've been uh, hiding myself in a little Balearic island of Mallorca, which most people know either for Magaluf partying, or they know for all the pro teams go over there and do their cycling. So, and it's a massive cycling island. There was a TV show called The Night Watchman, Oh, I remember With uh, Tom Hiddleston, and that was filmed there as well. Oh, nice. Yeah, so it's a really nice, beautiful house on this hill. Yeah, you, you, I mean, it's picturesque. I mean, every, it is, it's very photo, beautiful. You've got to check out his Instagram. His Instagram uh, is um, the occasional cyclist. Uh, very, very much a more than occasional cyclist. Yeah, but, uh, for but now. Some of, the photos, <laughs> some of the photos are magnificent. Well, I have really good photographers who come with me, yeah, because I'm terrible for taking pictures. I'm like, oh, did Paul, did you take pictures? Or this, that, like my friend Heidi, big shout out to Heidi, uh, has always been my sort of, my camera girl. And like, not having Heidi, when I was over there, I was thinking, no, I'm going to have like, take my pictures. But luckily, I had a couple of friends over there who love taking pictures on the ride, so it was usually the case of that. Mm. And what was it like? What were the roads like? I mean, you, you imagine an, an island, you don't really think of hills and everything else, yeah. but... It's a, it's a strange island, because it's got a bit of everything. It's like, it's flat, and then it goes right into this mountain range in the north. And the island that goes stretches from the northwest all the way to the northeast and it's like 80 kilometers of just mountains so it's this whole mountain range called the tramontana and that's where everybody goes and does their riding so if you want to just go out for a quick half an hour ride then you can't go out for a half an hour ride. <laughs> <laughs> unless you want to stay on the flat unless, unless you want to stay on the bike path and, and dodge tourists you go and you go through a you go up through the island, even just like five minutes out of the main town, you start, you're straight into hills. And it's all hills, 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 and it's great. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, coming back to, to Melbourne now, you've still yeah. got hills, but you've got the flats, you've got Beach Road. I, I, haven't, I haven't done Beach Road. You haven't done I've Beach Road again yet? No, I drove, I drove down it the other day and went, ah, oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, well, we'll get you out on Beach Road again. I'll get out on Beach Road the weekend, I think, go for a spin. What do you think of uh, riding in, in, back in Melbourne? Well, funny you should say that, because the other day, like, being over in Mallorca, I think I could count on one hand the amount of people who were aggressive on the road, and they were usually tourists in hire cars. But over here, we were riding out of Cardinia the other day, and we had two people screaming out the car, single file, single file, I'm like, <laughs> really? Really? I forgot. It was like, you know, I forgot about people like this. So, uh, yeah. so tell us about your riding. What, what sort of riding do you normally do? For me, it's riding for cake and it's riding for, it's riding for just to do some thinking and it's riding to do, to be social. And that, that kind of rides I do, like I'm never going to win any trophies. I just love going climbing hills and just being out with my mates. And then 
if I'm not out with my mates, I love, love going on solo rides just to get out the frustrations of the day. In other words, it's your mental health it's activity. My, it's totally my mental health sort of thing. Like I can do an hour on the bike and I, I've forgotten what I was like stressed about. With uh, like St Kilda Cycling Club, we used to do the group rides. Excuse me. With them, but more so like it was more. They were like structured rides kind of thing, whereas uh, in Spain it's more ad hoc. It's like who's out, who wants to go for a ride kind of thing. So you go for shop rides, and you go for like local rides. And I used to uh, lead a couple of groups there as well. So. And over there, you were actually selling clothing brands. Mm. Tell us about that. That was the whole point I went over there. I went over there to set up a, I've always wanted to have a, my own little shop and I thought I had the opportunity to take a brand from Australia over there and sort of give that to the, give that a go over there in Europe because Europe's a hard, really hard market because it's so sort of, I wouldn't say it's saturated but there's so many players on the market there. Whereas the difference here in Australia is like, we love those little boutique brands and we've got a certain style here in Australia that nobody else has got. Mm. From my experience over there, you, you get your likes of your Rafa, which is like consistent all around the world. So people who wear Rafa, they all look like Rafa. And then you all, you know, that's a nice kind of look. It's very conservative and it's very sort of, you know, you know where you put your clothes. So I took this brand out there and people genuinely took interest in it. And it was nice to have a little boutique in, right in the center of a town which wasn't on the main sort of cycling route and it was mainly tourists and people who knew about it would come to the shop. What about um, bike shops? A lot of people say that when they go overseas they, they can never find a bike shop but people when they come over here they always tell me I, when I'm com coming over here from other countries they say I can never find a bike shop. So what was it like looking for a bike shop over there? Over the, well I suppose you've got the language barrier as well, but there's plenty of bike shops, but the, over there they seem to focus more on uh, bike hire. So bike hire shops will have a little workshop just to maintain their bikes. Mm. So, and then you'll get, there's a lot of mechanics around, but those mechanics are tied into sort of like, you'll have tour operators who do bike tours. So you'll get like, I had a couple of mates who were mechanics, but they didn't work in a bicycle mechanic shop. They did mechanics on uh, like higher bikes. We had a lot of riders who sort of rode with Sabello who came in and you know, had a couple of like famous actors or won't name drop, but they'd come in and we'd take them for rides as well. So they, you know, cycling there is very, it's a very much a way of life because they're used to all like the pros being over there. They've been, just been going there for years. And there's no, there's no race over there though, is it? I mean there's racing, but there's no there race. There used to be, there used to be the race in Mallorca. They have a lot of Fondo kind of rides there. They just recently had one, the 312, where 8,000 people did that ride. 8,000? 8, 8, people. So those people came to the island to the A lot of people were there for the ride. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Because so, like, that's, that's like the population of the island, isn't it? Yeah, they, the they, population's like 125,000. 125,000. And, and in the summer it goes up to like 700. Wow. It's ridiculous. So if there was something you wanted to say about cycling in uh, Australia, what, you know, looking down at the one, of the, one, of the, one, of the, one of the one of the cameras that you've got in front of you? What would you say about cycling in Australia? I think cycling in Australia is very unique, I think, because the, the way it's sort of, it's developed here. Like we've had, you know, we've had our like champions here. We've had like Adele, we've had like Roman Dennis, you know, the guys who are riding for Mitchell and Scott now and that. You know, you've got like uh, old mate Jack Egg over in Spain as well. Mm. So, you know, they take all that sort of Australianism over there. So the way, uh, the way I found here is very community based the cycling. So like, you know, we stick to our clubs. There's clubs like split out, like especially like St Kilda. We've got like the Squirrels group and we've got like the Tenex crew. crew you know, and everyone's abilities. C Kate, CTX. And CTX. And the CTX Caltex has got crew. Some, some Hawthorne riders in yeah, it. And that's yeah, that's it. It's great. Work. You know, and then all yeah. the shops up there like rise, like, you know, bike gallery, like my old shop, Urban Pedal, I've got like a, a really big group now. Mm. And everybody knows everybody that way. So, you know, and I'll, that's what I missed when I was over in Spain because you didn't have that sort of <laughs> kind of family to like back you up kind of thing. So I want to go for a ride. I want to go and do like a training ride. Who'd you go out with? Yeah. And like, oh yeah, you go out with the pros, but the pros are going to just kind of kill you up the hill. See, I, I remember the days when, you know, we're only talking about when you were here yeah. maybe months ago. 
I'd see you down Beach Road mm. and you'd see me and you'd yell out, hey Edward, yeah. yeah. Guess what they yell out these days? Well, hey, hey TJ's dad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you're the guy off TV. He's like, yeah. no, so I'm no longer, I'm no longer no, Edward on the TJ's bike. I'm now TJ's dad. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> um, yeah. So it's a little bit different even for me now. Ooh. I mean, I've, I've watched my son come through the ranks in yeah. A grade now. Mate, we've been following you for years, mate. When you started off with your shabby kit, and now look at you, mate. You're fantastic on the bike, mate. We love it. And it's been great to see that. It's been, it's great to see like. You know, the develop the team development and that's what I love about like the crits and everything. You know, I missed all that of like going to crits and going like on a, you know, in December, like starting from October and you're seeing the guys like getting in, stuck into it. Yeah, T give it here, give it here. What what's it like getting all the compliments there, Terence? Oh it's bigger boost. Thanks, thanks man. <laughs> um it's good. It feels, it feels really good. I love it. Well, that's what it's about, mate. Well, like, we're, you know, I've put 50 bucks on you winning the Vuelta in five years' time, mate. So you better, like, hurry up. Yeah, six and a half. Six and a half? Six and a half. <laughs> Dollars. Dollars. Well, euro. euro. Yeah, yeah, we'll go euro. Yeah, so so you're like, staying here like now? I'll, I'll be here also, for, the, for the foreseeable future. We've got a, some irons in the fire. Mm. But there's a future ahead. I don't know what it's going to be, but, you know, it is what you make it. Well, mm. there you go. You've heard it here. Uh, Mark Skinner is back in town, guys. So, yay. Um, thanks, everyone, for uh, watching today. Um, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, Mark, thanks very much for Any joining time, us. It's, been, it's a pleasure, and, as always. And uh, look, today we've, we've actually been in Brewster, um, our local cafe, uh, doing the uh, doing the Why We Ride segment. This is the first time I think we've actually done an interview in here so far. So, um, it's a nice video. Oh, the only is really good. The yeah. coffee's coffee brilliant. is amazing. The coffee That's is good. amazing, yeah. It's something that uh, you come into the North for, mate. So, we'll see you yeah. in a few North Side Revives, maybe? Oh, absolutely, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you're, you're back to St Kilda again now? Or? Yeah, I'll be, uh, we'll be, I'll be attending the uh, St Kilda South of France now. Yes, we've got a book for that. Oh, actually, I'm going to get tickets for it. Actually, um, I was going to book with TJ, but TJ's going to be overseas anyway, so. I'll Skype you. You'll, you'll Skype yeah, we'll Skype, we'll Skype yeah. yeah, he'll be watching it live anyway, little bugger. Yeah. As in, as in probably there that day. Yeah. Well, well. But thank you very much, Mark, for joining My us today. You, and um, hope you guys all enjoyed another uh, Why We Ride segment. Thanks very much, everyone. Uh, see you next time.